Title I, I'm Fabio Basile. I'm a VFX artist and in the next 20-25 minutes I'm going to share with you a typical workflow I use to create a simple environment that can be used in a top-down, third-person game level, complete with physically based texture sets in multiple resolutions. Mind you, this is not a tutorial, it's simply a walkthrough, so I won't go into much detail on techniques I use for modeling, UV mapping, shading, sculpting, and so forth. The applications I will be showing in this video are Autodesk Maya for modeling and testing my textures and shaders, Autodesk Mudbox for sculpting, and Substance Painter for PBR painting and texture packaging. So let's get started. I like to kick off a new design by setting up my scene so that it's easy for me to build the scale. In this way my models will be scaled consistently and ready to be shared with multiple designers, animators and texture artists for the benefit of everyone's workflow. The environment I'm going to build here will be simple, but will have a lot of detail which is why it's important to start from a simple shape, easy to control which I can progressively enhance in resolution and complexity as needed. This element will have player avatars walking through it, so defining where players and NPCs have access to is important. Once I'm happy with the basic structure of my walls and floors, I can now proceed to increase the definition of the environment. This is where I plan the most distinctive features of my environment, such as bending of walls and relief and depressions in the terrain. In this case, the environment I am building is an underground cave, not unlike a mine shaft or a dungeon, so the shape of the walls and floors will be somewhat uneven. When my base mesh is complete, it's time to export it to my sculpting app. In this case, Autodesk Mudbox. Mudbox has a direct plugin to Maya which allows me to directly edit a scene between the two apps without exporting my models. However, I like to keep base versions of all my meshes anyway, just in case I want to build them in different ways, so my format of choice here is OBJ. Also, exporting as OBJ makes it easier to edit my meshes into other apps as well, like ZBrush, should I need to do that. As I mentioned earlier, I won't go into the little details of the techniques I use in terms of specific sculpting tools, but here is one tip in regards to tackling complex models, which you can sort of gather as you watch what I'm doing here. First of all, I use as few texture brushes as possible, often no more than two. I start by using a large radius and sculpt the entire area with broad strokes to define the most significant features of my environment. I then progressively reduce the radius of my brush to enhance the resolution of my mesh, down to the finest details. This technique has several advantages. For one, it allows me to control the polygon count of my mesh and keep it down to a reasonable number. Performance is important and being able to control the complexity of my mesh is as important as the amount of detail I put into it. Also remember, when importing your final mesh into Unity or Unreal, you are very likely to use displacement maps to control additional tessellation of your meshes. So it looks like I'm done with sculpting my little cave, so I am 
now ready to re-export it back to Maya and rebuild the UVs so that I can move on to the next and final phase which is the creation of my PBR texture sets. Maya has some pretty awesome tools for UV mapping and automatic layouts are usually pretty easy to work with. I usually create an automatic UV map and then I use the layout command to optimize the UVs and eliminate distortion and other issues that may occur when painting over my mesh. With my mesh properly UV mapped and imported into Substance Painter, I can now work on my PBR set. I usually start from a base material and then paint additional layers progressively, enhancing the details of my textures until I'm satisfied with the level of detail and quality of the visual. When painting textures, I usually take into account all the effects I want to see at render time including those that involve the creation of particle systems or deformation, such as flowing lava, sprinkling water, smoke, clouds, and so forth. Textures must be designed to interact with their surrounding environment and must work well with other elements in the scene. For a seamless experience, for instance, if there is a water effect in the scene, it only makes sense that the portion of PBR shader interacting with the water will feature some level of metallicity and reflectivity. Once my PBR set is complete, I usually export it in different resolutions to allow for scaling at different specs. I typically check the quality of my PBR textures by shading my final mesh in Maya using a Redshift material. For those unfamiliar with this engine, Redshift uses GPU accelerator rendering which has the advantage of letting me see almost in real time what my shaders look like in render view. Once I'm done with my main model, it's time to think of additional detail.
Occasionally, underground caves or similar environments may feature bodies of murky water. While water is typically represented by a flat plane with water shader, in this instance, I thought of creating something with a bit more detail. So I've created a water plane with some tessellation, cut roughly at the edges of the areas where the water surfaces. Also, murky water in the nature often features some type of dirty edge where the water and the terrain meet. I've decided to portray that by creating a transparency map in Substance Painter, which I can use to give the water a different, more interesting look. Also, I can use the same texture to specify areas where I want displacement effects to appear, and appropriately add tessellation. So this is my final result, which took roughly an hour and a half to complete from start to finish. Thanks for watching.